This is The Real Hustle on Holiday. In this series, Alex, Jess and Paul expose to our hidden cameras the scams that cheat tourists and travellers out of their hard-earned holiday money. On tonight's show, Paul gets the Spanish Inquisition. You got it? Can you see your pockets? Athlete Ewan Thomas bottles it. Okay. He's like Spider-Man hands. And these ladies find out what the hotel safe is for. We've been done. We've been done. All the people on this show have been hustled for real, and after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. This is the Plaza del Obispo in Malaga, destination for thousands of tourists who come to marvel at the impressive cathedral. Amongst all the tourists today is Paul, He's going to demonstrate one of the classic scams to catch out holidaymakers around the world. He is the helpful stranger. Paul seems to have time on his hands and spots an opportunity to do his good deed of the day for some holidaymakers. You guys want a picture with all of you? It's up to you. That's what you get for being helpful. Maybe some other tourists would appreciate his kind offer. Do you want a picture? You want a picture together? You want together? Yeah, you don't mind. Yeah, that's all right. Cheers. Nothing better to do. These two guys are keen to have a souvenir photo. That's good. Why don't you get one with the uh, thing in the background? With the door, yeah, Santa Jessica. Paul's really taking pride in his photographs. Everyone ignores that and looks at this thing. Oh, why don't you stand just about there? About there is fine. It's great. Sorry. Paul's not happy with the lighting conditions. It's not picking up any light here at all. And then, daylight robbery. She's got your camera. She's got your camera. Yeah, sorry man, I just turned around and she grabbed it. The whole thing happened too fast for the marks to see, and Paul has suddenly become the prime suspect. I know, she's got it. I mean, check me, Paul, I don't have my pocket, I got that. He needs to use all his skills as a con man to talk his way out of the sticky situation. Sure, of course you can, I don't mind. They realise Paul really doesn't have their camera. Yeah, did you see her take it? I got that. A local points out two policemen further down the road, and one of the marks heads off to report the theft. I think you should go with him, mate. Yeah, just tell him what happened. I'll wait here. Paul suddenly remembers he needs to be elsewhere. So if he hasn't got the camera, who grabbed it? While Paul was waiting for a mark in the plaza, there were Alex and Jess waiting just around the corner with their scooter engine running. You want to go? Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah, that's all right. Cheers. Nothing better to do. For the scam to work, Paul had to manoeuvre the marks across the square. You want to get one over here? Everyone ignores that and looks at this thing. So that he could stand in a pre-arranged spot next to the road. Paul, pretending to have trouble with the camera, Sorry. was Alex's cue to hit the gas. And that meant Paul could turn towards the road and hold out the camera at the crucial moment. She's got your camera. Jess just had to stick out her hand and grab it. It took all three hustlers working together in perfect sync to pull off the choreographed snatch. We were standing there having a photo done by that um, cathedral. Jason took one of me, then Jason said, you take one of me. And then some crazy man over there said he'd take a photo of his boat. I don't know why we give him the camera. I didn't, you did. <laughs> I know, that's what I'm saying, yeah, I know. 
And then he asked us to go in front of that building there. And then the next minute he said the camera's gone. A bike, and all I see was this bike come past, but it happened too far. I seen him put the land out, and they just straight out of his hand. You know, there's a crowd of people, and you say, oh, do you want me to take a photo of you? So that's what you've done. And he just, the fat camera just disappeared. We've all been in situations where we've been on holiday and we've asked somebody to take a picture for us. But you should be very wary if somebody approaches you. Always make sure you keep all your belongings really close to you so that nobody could grab them off you from the streets. And you should avoid carrying expensive items around with you at all costs. Instead, leave them in a hotel safe. Or best of all, don't take them on holiday at all. How are you? Nice to see you. Money won is twice as sweet as money earned. You might as well say goodbye now. And money won from a celebrity is even sweeter. I am on the verge of crying. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Let's we'll see if you can do it. Oh. In the Celebrity Kong Games. This week, the hustlers are hoping to trip up a 400 metre runner, Olympic and Commonwealth Games athlete, Ewan Thomas. So, How are you? I'm all right, thank you very much. Yeah. A little bit nervous, obviously anticipating this, but apart from that, life's quite good. Not too bad. Yeah. Right. You're still training, and you keep very I, fit. I keep fit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my own athletics training. I sort of retired three years ago, but right. I still try and keep a bit buff. You know. Mm -hmm. So that will come yeah. in handy, actually. I will it. It will. Yeah. Because, because there's, there's a, a little challenge. bit. Of, there's a physical aspect. There's also a mental aspect as well. You right. Why aren't you saying you used to be a BMX rider as well? I was, yeah, from yeah. the age of nine years old. Have you still got the grip? Because the grip's really important, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, my grip's quite good. Yeah, and I ride good a motorbike as well, so I've got quite strong. Perfect. You know, these are all glasses, but if we had some bottles... We're going to... We're going to use these. All right, OK. Two for Mr okay. Paul. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of money involved. OK. How does a tenor sound? Just so happens the tenor's good, because I've got all a crisp right. new one here. Ewan's right. got the bottle to accept the wager and puts his money where his mouth is. You're not going to get it back. But well, maybe if I win the bet, I will. Hey, yeah. maybe. Right. Maybe. If... I'm quite competitive, so I keep buying yeah. it. I'm mega competitive. I know. OK. All right. So here's the idea. Yeah. It's very simple. With one hand, without yeah. using the table, without supporting the bottles in any way, you have to start with the mouth to mouth, just the bottles, not you and yeah. I. Yeah. And uh, you hold them like that. And then you have to end with them, held in the same hand, base to base. OK? All right. And I can't, one I can't sort of lean them on myself or nothing like that. Want to give it so, a shot? Yeah, of course. Okay. So you start like this. Okay. Mouth oh, to mouth. Move away. <laughs> okay. I'm struggling just to hold it like that. Right. Okay. Thinking out loud, I, the only way I can imagine doing this, and I don't think I could, would be to drop this one gently, play, gently drop it. Yeah. But then I need it to drop very straight, which it won't, because it will be too spinning. My initial thing is literally to drop it and then catch, using that, that bottle, catch the top of that one. If you can do that, you probably should join the circle. Uh, exactly. How would you do it? How would you think? I can't roll, I can't, I can't let go, basically, no, as well? Well, you could let go if you want to, to some degree, but you're only allowed to use one hand. You can't lay anything on the table. Yeah, you can move the bottle around the with that hand, mm. but you can't use the table or your body. There you go. Oh, OK, oh, there we go. And he's off. I need, like, Spider-Man hands. What do you say, that? Ah, <laughs> uh, what if you... Hmm. I really want to try harder, but it will drop. It will Look, drop. Do you want us, let's get something try. safe. Yeah. Will a safety net make it any easier? You feel, feel like... as if you've had a proper cracker. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right. And if you break a bottle, don't worry about it. Right, so... Ooh, Ooh, okay. I need to flip that one and catch it. Oh, well. Oh. Looks like he could be on the home straight. I'm starting to get a little worried. He's actually almost done it. Could this be the first £10 loss for the hustlers? Close one. It was a valiant effort from Ewan, but in the end, the bottle and his chance to beat the hustlers slipped through his fingers. But to win the tenor, Paul still needs to prove that it can actually be done. 
And the thing is, you were pretty close. Right? Here you go, there's one. Two. Three. Just bring it down. There it is. Just to there. It's all down to the technique. Paul go. gives Ewan the step-by-step -step guide. Tilt this one down like that. Yep. Throw it up and catch it as close to the base as possible. Okay. And then move it up so you're holding it between finger and thumb. Yeah? Yeah. And what you do is you kind of relax these fingers and just let it fall down to there, but keep a hold of it. Perfect. Now you come up to there, keep it in position. And then using your fingers, just give it a little slide to run down. So it goes well, basically, down to it there. can't go anywhere. My hand's in the way. There it is. Just to there. Um, I'm giving up. I'll, I'll just watch you do it. All right. I, I, admit, you, I admit defeat. It's easy when you know how. A bit of practice and Ewan will be hustling his own mates with this con. So, that's another celebrity tenor for the Hustlers' bulging coffers. Take care of the money. Yeah, let's take it to the bank. Right. Cheers. Cheers, guys. It wasn't a bad effort, though, was it? Cheers, Paul. Cheers. Still to come, Paul becomes an uninvited hotel guest. Find out what floats Jess's call. <laughs> and watch the Hustlers put the left into left luggage. Make sure you've got all in there. If you're going on holiday this year and don't want to run into any hustlers, here are some helpful tips to get you on your way. When people go abroad, they're going to need to get around, and for some, that means using taxis. Now, if you're going to use a taxi, make sure it's a fully licensed one. You can ask your hotel to recommend one, you can ask the people you're staying with, ask fellow travellers what taxis they've been using and use the same ones. Remember that in some countries, taxis don't use meters. There's pre-arranged fares for every trip. Now, you need to make sure you know exactly what the fare is going to be before you set off. Now, there is a scam that happens all around the world in taxis. Let's say you've arrived at your destination, the taxi driver asks for 19 euros for the fare. You hand over a 20. In that instant, as he takes it over his shoulder, he will switch it for a lower denomination note, let's say, in this case, a 10. And he will say, well, it's, the fare is 19. Now, either you insist that you've given him a 20, in which case the taxi driver very cleverly replies, yes, but this is all I've got. I haven't got any change. In which case, you just let him off the one euro and he gets a one euro tip. Or you apologize for your mistake and you hand him over another 10, in which case the taxi driver makes a nice little tidy profit. So the lesson for this is whenever you're in a foreign country, whether you're buying stuff or paying for services, always make sure you know exactly how much money you're handing over. That way, no one's going to try and pull a fast one. Alex, Paul and Jess are on their way to a busy four-star hotel, temporary home to thousands of commuters and tourists. They're here to demonstrate how determined con artists can separate unwary travellers from their possessions even when they think they're locked away safe and sound. This is the Hotel Room Ripoff. Paul heads up to the guest floors and lets himself straight into one of the rooms, as if he was a hotel guest, which, of course, he isn't. He takes a moment to install some hidden cameras and then gets to work, ransacking the room. It doesn't take Paul long to track down everything worth stealing. An expensive laptop, a mobile phone, two handbags, and a wallet with cash and credit cards. Having taken over 1,000 pounds worth of items, Paul heads straight back to the hotel lobby where he rejoins Alex. What do you think? Lovely. What do you think? Hmm. I thought we'd have some fun, huh? Yeah. The boys head off to celebrate their haul with a bottle of expensive bubbly. Madame, how are you? And that looks like Jess, 
waiting for them in a cab. Oh, mate, oh, thank you. Well, that's a good one. So, what was going on? How did Paul walk straight into a stranger's hotel room and straight out with all their stuff? Let's take another look at the hustlers arriving at the hotel. Jess and Paul headed for the lobby, leaving Alex to carry out the first part of the scam with a little help from a sharp suit and a hotel manager badge. He waited near the front exit for some guests to leave the hotel. Oh, hi there. Excuse me, are you hotel guests? Uh, yeah. Has anyone informed you about the security reset we're doing today? No. Uh, uh, basically, we are resetting all the keys on all the floors. Oh, right. So we just need to program, reprogram. Are you a hotel oh, guest okay. as well? This particular hotel guest is actually Jess. If you, if you hand me your key, I'll make sure that it gets reset, because otherwise we're going to do a security reset in about half an hour. And then we get them back again. Yeah, of course, you get them back from reception. Uh, your uh, room number is? 206. In your Jess played a crucial role, handing over an old key from another hotel as a convincer. This left the marks with no reason to question Alex's authority. So they gave him their key card and room number two. 502, I'll just hand that back. And uh, your keys will be ready in about half an hour. Half an hour, that's OK. Fine. All right, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. It was as simple as that. In less than a minute, Alex had the marked room number and, crucially, their key. And having just left, they'd be gone long enough for Paul to empty the room. 502, 20 minutes. Take me five. And what about the pricey champagne that Alex left the hotel with? That was also courtesy of the Marks. Well, can we have the uh, Pierre Jouet, the 99? I'll take it unopened and I'll sign it to my room if I can. Thank you very much. Alex just picked the most expensive vintage on the wine list. Yeah, it's uh, 502. 502? Yes. And charged it to the Marks' room bill. The hotel guests return and head to the front desk to pick up their reprogrammed key. The receptionist is a little confused, but issues a new one. After all, they're genuine hotel guests. They're about to discover a nasty surprise waiting behind the locked door. At least the key works. <laughs> oh, it works. Now it works. Have they turned it up the room already? Um, Don't mess about. Don't mess about. Oh, damn. Oh, for God's sake. Don't mess. <gasps> oh, my Anita. God. Shh. Where is my laptop? And where is my phone? My oh, my God. Can you put it to charge? Where is my laptop? And my phone? <gasps> call the manager. How do you call the manager? I don't know. We've been done. Come on, we're going down to reception. But the hotel manager won't be able to bring back their valuables. They're in the hustler's possession, who by now are long gone. We've only left that stuff in a hotel room that you would expect that's secure. I mean, it's not like high-value jewellery or anything where you need to have it in a security box or anything. It's just the usual it's stuff. your credit cards. I My whole bag's gone. Everything's gone. So it's not just the laptop, but it's not just... You I can see your credit, credit cards and all your money. Where's my gone? Don't cry. He asked, he said um, there's a problem with the cards and to give him the cards and come back in half an hour and they would have sorted it all out. He looked like he worked for the hotel and the hotel doesn't know nothing about this. We've been done. We've been done. With the right suit and a generic badge, it's surprising just how many people will assume that Alex works for the hotel. But that's what makes this type of scam work. Also, the situation we create with Jess helps to get them to comply. 
most people will follow along if someone else agrees rather than stand up for themselves and say no. But whatever you do, don't leave valuable items in your hotel room in the first place. Always put them in a safe or best of all, don't take them on holiday with you at all. Most good hotels put a lot of effort into keeping their guests secure. You've got to play your part. You've got to make sure that if you part with your hotel key card or you give somebody your room number, that you're dealing with a bona fide member of hotel staff. So if you are approached in unusual circumstances for your key card, don't give it up. Go back to reception, ask that person to come with you. If they won't come, there's a fair chance they're a con man. When on holiday, it doesn't get much better than relaxing in the sun with a drink in your hand. Except if that drink is free. The hostlers are going to show you how to win drinks from your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hostlers always have the edge. And you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. I will have a gin and tonic, please. Jess is out for a drink in a seaside bar, but she doesn't plan on picking up the tab. Did you study physics at school? You didn't, so you're no good at physics. No. I'm still going to pick you anyway for this. <laughs> okay, because this is actually about physics. I've got a challenge for you. Okay, I've got a glass of water. I've got a cork. I want you to place the cork in the water and make it settle in the centre without touching the edges of the glass. So it has to stay in the centre without going towards side of the glass. You think you can do it? Sounds simple enough? Uh, that's a challenge. I'll have a go. Okay. If you can do it, then I'll buy you a drink. And if you can't do it, and I can, can you buy me a drink? No. Shake? Yeah? Think it's fair? No helping if you know Hands it, okay? okay? Hands off the table, boys. Can I help? Sure. No, you can't help. And you can't help. Okay. Between you and me. Something to do with the glasses position? Whatever you think. <laughs> Whoa, baby, come on. Stay, stay. Oh, that's gone to the edge. You lose. Okay, so if I can do it, then you buy me a drink. Okay? No, no. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I didn't say you couldn't use anything. I'm just going to top it up a little bit. I see what's happening. I'm just going to top it up a little bit, you know. Yeah, a little bit. How much is a little bit? Come on. Just a little bit. <laughs> I'm, I'm concentrating here, boys. Go on, Cole. Go on, Cole. Oh. Take it out, quick. These guys have just been hustled by simple science. A floating cork always moves to the highest point of the water. When the glass is half full, the highest point is right at the edge because the water surface is slightly curved. But when the glass is full, the water surface actually bulges outwards, meaning the highest point is right in the center. And that's where the cork will float. It works in all drinks, especially free ones. Do you have your drink? There you go. You can use that now, can't you? You can do it with all your mates. Jess is in a busy shopping centre promoting a new left luggage facility. And for a limited time only, these lockers are completely free. This is the lockup. With so many people weighed down by bags, it's not long before Jess finds someone to make use of this great offer. Yeah, so you've got quite a few bags with you today. Would you like to use one of our free lockers? Um... You can have one each. Yeah, you're welcome. Put your stuff in there. I don't know if you can shove it all in one or... I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you two lockers. There's yours. Thank you. One for you. There you go. Just make sure you're back before nine. And the other lockers also start filling up. That's a bag of shopping and a backpack. I'll put all in there. Thank you very much. Do you want to put That's another bag locked up perfectly safe and secure. Not in any danger at all of being stolen by unscrupulous hustlers. Two hours later, the customers start coming back. But instead of finding Jess, they're faced with a big empty space. 
where the lockers and their bags used to be. They head into a nearby shop to ask if they've seen 40 metal lockers vanishing into thin air. And they're not the only ones wondering where all their belongings have gone. Let's take a look at what they didn't see. Just here. This was the mall earlier in the day. Why don't you go just there? You think so? Uh -huh. That'd be nice, yeah. Come on, someone might steal them. In a matter of minutes, this empty corner of the shopping centre was transformed into the Hustler's left luggage facility. All right, cup of tea. Bye-bye. <laughs> Once Jess had collected as many bags, rucksacks and carriers as she could... Do you want two of them? It was time to call back the hired muscle. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, heavy. And as quickly as the seemingly permanent lockers appeared, they were gone and along with all those bags, went into the back of the hustler's van, never to be seen again. There was a lady down there that was uh, having some lockers there for anybody to put their bags inside. And basically my friend put her bag in there and I was saying, no, I ain't putting my bag in there because I actually come here often. So I've never seen such a thing, so I thought, no way. I think my passport's in there as well, so I really need my bag. Jeez. I just can't believe it. I really can't. Hustlers are always looking for ways to separate you from your belongings. And there's nothing they like better than finding a way to get you to give them your stuff. Anytime you have to leave your luggage in lockers, make sure you're using reputable facilities, like at a train station and an airport. Of course, if you want to be sure about the safety of your belongings, the best way is to keep them with you at all times. Whenever you're invited to part with your valuables, whether it's locking them away or depositing them somewhere. If there is something unfamiliar about what you're being asked to do, don't be afraid to double check. You know, if it means going to a shopping centre and saying, are these cabinets new, are they okay, then do so. Don't be embarrassed about it. It's your money, your goods, your valuables that you're parting with. So just be safe about it. So remember, even when you're away from home, you should always keep your wits about you. She's got your camera. That way, you will avoid getting hustled on holiday. Where is my laptop?